So if you think of AI today, it acts as a black box, right? So you have some inputs, you have some outputs, and something happens in between, which clearly is very intelligent, but we don't know why certain decisions are taken and, and where. It's exactly as as human beings. So if you think about it, our input are the eyes, the touch, the sound, the smell. I take a decision in this brain, I do something, I move my hands, my muscles, I say something. That's exactly the same process, but we don't know wh what's going on and why and where it's been taken. AI is exactly the same today. Now, for a lot of the industry processes, this is not good enough because you want to know why certain things go wrong. Using now a new type of AI, the explainable AI, which essentially builds very large decision trees, so it's trying to come up with all possible conf configurations and situations you could be in and all possible decisions we could take and tries to find the best solution there. So it may not be intelligent, but it is very productive and it is backward traceable, it is accountable and it is very transparent. So and that is quite useful for the upcoming legislation like the GDPR. GDPR requires today uh, anybody using AI to explain why certain things have been decided and where. The same holds for the financial industry. AI today essentially is very good in visualizing, but it is not very good in imagining. So what it means is it can actually take all the input, what humanity and the universe has created today, it can scramble it, can superimpose it, do things with that, and produce something we may not have seen before, but it is always a combination of what has been done before. So you're just visualizing something. Whereas the ability to imagine, to create, to dream, to have a purpose, right? That is something machines today cannot do. We can't produce a Mozart or a Gaudi or a Leonardo by using AI today, right? So, and, and, and therefore that for me is a limit and maybe that is a limit we want to keep on purpose because we want to really make sure that this human quality always stands out above the machines. We all love AI, we love the idea of it actually making our life easier, but as long as I don't have to use it. So if you ask yourself very honestly, you know, would you today get into a Tesla? Would you put your kids into a Tesla whilst they bring your kids to school and they're actually doing homework in there or watching a video and the car drives at 50 miles or 50 kilometers per hour for really difficult traffic areas, right? So if you're really honest about it, the majority of the people will say no. So that's a bit of a conundrum here. That's because we all understand from a rational and engineering point of view, the self-driving car features of Tesla and any of these self-driving cars uh, is actually much better than a human driver, 10 times less accidents, right? But still for us to use it, it is a barrier of adoption which we are not ready to make yet. So we're in a situation here is where we understand the utility of AI in the context of driving, but we have social uh, and psychological problems of adopting it really in our daily routine.